morning, good afternoon, good evening. How is everybody today? My name is Garth Brown. I'm one of the faculty members here at NACC Akerley Campus in the Culinary, Hospitality, and Tourism programs. To my left, on the right of where you're going to be watching, we have someone who's joining us that hasn't been on campus for such a long time, one of our alumni, Kelly Chapman, and she's a graduate of our hospitality program from 2019. What's up, Kelly? It's great to be back, Garth. Right? What's it like coming back? Uh, it's weird being in the halls after so many years, but it's so exciting and you still feel the, the warm love of NSCC. We would like to uh, welcome you officially to the NSCC 25 launch of the 25 minute learning series that we're doing. Today, as we start getting towards the holiday or festive season, we would like to celebrate with you at home with this 25 minute video. And what we're gonna do is, well, you know what, eggnog something that is very festive, something that everybody is kind of familiar with. Today we're going to do the steps of making two types of eggnogs. One raw, so one that you don't have to cook, you don't have to worry about going into the oven. The other one and such, you're going to make it, uh, baking it, and we're going to cook it actually like an ice cream base called a creme anglaise. And then that's going to be one that you could use potentially for a giftable version. Fun. So have you made eggnog before? I have not. This is my first time as well. Crazy, right? So here's the great thing about this. As much as Everybody that's watching is going to be learning. We're kind of learning on the fly as well. That's kind of what we do here at NSCC though. We teach, we share knowledge, and at the end of the day, we want to do, uh, we want to eat, drink, and be merry. And we're going to start with eggnog. Once you're in your kitchen, you need some ingredients. So you're going to go to your fridge, you're going to get some eggs, you're going to go to your pantry, you're going to get some sugar, you're going to get some milk, and you're going to get some cream. You're going to have a little bit of vanilla, hopefully. And then we've also got a little bit of a, some winter spiced simple syrup, but in that case, I'm gonna have Kelly talk to you a little bit about what are some of the spices that we put into an eggnog? So for your at-home recipe today, you'll need cinnamon, nutmeg, cloves, and allspice. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna come over here to the, to the magic mixer, and I'm gonna make the first stage of, uh, of our eggnog. So I'm gonna take our egg yolks, I'm gonna put them in our mixer, right in there. Then I'm gonna grab our sugar. For some of you that don't have a mixer, we're gonna have to do it the old fashioned way, a little whisk in a bowl. We wanna work a little bit smarter, not harder, but like I'm saying, I've got Kelly here, so the chances are we're gonna be working a little bit harder. Maybe just a little bit. Perfect, we're gonna try not to yell at each other though. So I'm gonna come back over here. I've put my egg yolks in, I've got my sugar in. I'm gonna just lift up the lever and it's gonna get a little loud. At this point in time, I'd probably play your favorite playlist. Uh, get the music cranked. Um, maybe pour yourself a little bit of something and then turn it on. So the key is right now is to really get the, the sugar and the egg yolks mixed together real nice. We want not to be grainy or gritty whatsoever. I'm going to add a little bit of vanilla. Okay, so Kelly, tell me what you think. What do you see there? Oh, it looks nice and smooth, combined and mixed well. Perfect. So if you could take a look. So the egg yolks have been incorporated with the sugar. We added a little bit of vanilla into there as well. Okay, so it should be nice and pale yellow. And now we're gonna add our milk and some cream. One whole cup of whipped cream or heavy cream. Now you might be asking, why didn't you just put it all in at once? because you really want the sugar and the egg yolk to really become one. So it's really important that you do it in stages. Which means patience. Just saying you need to be patient, okay? Good things, the good things come to those that wait. Now we're gonna add the rest of the milk. I'm gonna add some of our spices now, just raw. I'm gonna finish it off with the milk. I'm gonna give it one last turbo blast. Gets a little messy, so don't wear your favorite shirt. I'm gonna take it off. That's almost the base of one eggnog right there. So it's thick and it's creamy. You got your milk, you've got your cream, you've got these wonderful uh, sort of baking spices. But now, what we need to do though is we need to make a meringue. Because this is so rich and kind of heavy, we want to lighten it up. And as you can see here, I've already got a meringue that's made. Okay, it's nice and it's like a light, little fluffy cloud. So it's egg whites and sugar, and we whisk them all in to get these really nice stiff peaks. And I'm gonna show you right now. So the four egg whites that we had from the egg yolks, we're gonna pour right into our mixer. A little bit more of that sugar, and I'm gonna turn it up again. Favorite playlist, turn it up to eight and let it rip. 
I like things a little sweet because I'm a touch bitter. So I'm gonna add a little bit more sugar. And that also really gets it nice and fluffy, as you can see right over here. Do we have mountains? No, but what you can do, this is a really great thing. We need to be a little bit patient. Right? Kelly's already asking for mountains. We can only, we, I can barely lift this or move this. She wants me to move mountains with meringue. So right now you can see it's getting a nice sheen and a nice shine. The sugar and the egg white protein is really now starting to, to, to build together. They're kind of bonding, unlike me and Kelly here. So I'm gonna put it in for about maybe another minute or so at a high volume to get those nice peaks that we've been talking about. So we just took the meringue out of the uh, out of its insert, and that's it right there. You can see it. It's I took it off a little bit, not quite so peaked, because we're gonna make a beverage with it. But if you can see right there, it's still nice and fluffy. It's almost like a little marshmallow. And then that's kind of now the last stage. We're gonna actually put all the ingredients back together. So put them right back into the same mixer. Eggnog is now done. So it should be super light and fluffy and eggy. It's ridiculously good. Yeah? Yeah, you should give it a shot. It's light, it's fluffy, it's airy, it's got those bark spices to it, right? So this now is the base for your drink at home. So now, without having to go through the mixer, because Kelly, she's taken all these hacks and come up with a version to make this drink without having to use a mixer whatsoever. So we're going to my favorite part, making the cocktail. So we're going to use Garth's version with the milk, the cream, the spices, the egg yolks. I have the winter simple syrup here as well as my favorite bourbon and we're going to make a cocktail today. We've got our shaker tin all set up and ready to go. You'll just need a strainer and a dry shake. Okay. Um, super simple, easy to follow at home. You're going to wow your friends with this one. Okay, wow us. So we're going to start with two ounces of the eggnog base. We're going to go into an ounce of the winter simple syrup. And so you just made the simple syrup with the same sort of spices, but it was just like sugar and water. Is that what you did? Just a quick measurement, sugar, water, all your favorite spices, just tasting it until it's exactly where you want it to be. Amazing, I like that. We're going to go with one and a half ounces of your favorite bourbon. And instead of bourbon, could you use a different spirit? You could use any spirit that you'd like. Or um, rum. I would love it with rum. Perfect. And then we're going to finish it with one ounce of egg whites to give it that nice meringue texture through the, uh, through the cocktail. You. So you're literally making a meringue in the tin. I sure am. So none of this stuff has to come into play. None of it. So we're going to start with a dry shake. So we're going to take this guy here. So that just like a little spring or? Just a spring. I grab the one from my strainer, just take it off, okay. throw it in my tin here. I'm gonna give a hard shake okay. of my dry ingredients. So right now that's aerating in there, it's getting nice and fluffy and the egg whites starting to mix up with the bourbon and the mixture of the cream and the milk and all the spices. We're gonna grab a scoop of ice, put it into our shaker tin. The colder the better. I, I find the colder the better because what's happening right now is that you really want to get those ingredients nice and cold because we don't have those egg yolks cooked, right? Right. So we keep it nice and cold. And we just want to seal this nice and tight again. Yep. So Garth, having my back again, has so generously iced my glass for me so that my drink is served nice and cold for my guests. We talked about working smarter, not harder. Apparently this one's working a lot smarter than I am. We've got it nice and cold, nice and frothy. The first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this ice that Garth so graciously got me. She's so Have my so glass ready to go. Unappreciative. So I'm going to use two strainers here to make sure we get all the bits out. We're going to pour that into our coupe oh. glass. Stop already. Why don't we do this? <gasps> I like the way you think. Now? And then I'm going to top it with my other favorite, a little bit of crumbled candy cane. Oh, look at that. Very festive, very festive. Love that. You're going to wow your guests with this one. Okay, well, you should probably just um, make sure that it's okay. I mean, like dive right in? Well, I think there's only one way to do this. All right, bottoms up. I'm so jealous. Delicious. What you can do, if you don't have a bar kit with things like jiggers and shakers and strainers and all that sort of stuff, I know that probably everyone has a mason jar of some sort at home. 
right? Like, Absolutely. So what we can do as well is you can do everything Kelly just did in a mason jar. So I'm gonna take a little bit of vanilla. I'm gonna take a little bit of the syrup. I'm gonna borrow some of your egg whites. I'm gonna borrow some of this wonderful, creamy, delicious eggnoggy base. So good. Maybe I'll add one more. Okay, and then I'm gonna borrow some bourbon. Okay, I think that's everything. So now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do just like Kelly did. I'm gonna dry shake, but I put the lid on nice and tight, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna shake it really, really hard. And now we've kind of made the base like she just did there, but now I'm gonna add some ice because you need to get it nice and cold. So I'm gonna fill it up with ice, close the cap, and shake again. And you can even serve it to your guests, I guess, if you want to, right? You could have it all done in these mason jars, no ice, have them lined up in your fridge so you can hang out in the kitchen, do your thing. And when your guests arrive, you add some ice, give it a shake, right? And then when they come in, take that top part off, give them a straw. Who's working smarter, not harder? I am, 100%. How is it? It's yeah. really tasty, yeah, it's delicious. It's, it's all the things that you want it to be. It's, it's frothy, it's kind of creamy. It's got that wonderful sort of rounded sweetness that you get from bourbon. Rum would be really great. But again, like I said, you don't need to. You can do this dry, no alcohol whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And by adding maybe some different flavored syrups, and some people can get them from, you know, you can use pumpkin spice or you can do vanilla, all those different things that could add instead of a liquor. So Garth, with the holiday season coming and gift giving, what if I want to give this as a gift? We need to do the eggnog a little bit differently than what we did previously for the cocktail, which was kind of the raw egg version. So what we want to do is we want to actually cook our eggs this time. So we're going to use the exact same ingredients that we've done. We're going to have four egg yolks. We're going to do a third cup of sugar. We're going to put them into the mixer. We're going to mix it all up nicely. And then we're going to cook some milk, right? So we're going to put the milk. I've got one cup of heavy cream or whipping cream. I've got one and a three quarter cups of whole milk. And then I've got some vanilla. And then we've got all the amazing spices. And the nice thing is, in this case, because we're cooking it, those bark, those winter spices really kind of incorporate nicely into the cream mixture. I'm gonna drop my eggs into the mixture, okay? And then I'm gonna add some of the sugar to start. While I'm doing the egg yolk, I wanna work smarter, not harder. And I wanna get some cream, the milk, the vanilla, and all the spices into the, into the pan. Heat. Add a little vanilla. So it's all the sugar's all been sort of incorporated into the egg yolk real nice. What we need to do to stabilize the eggs is we're going to slowly temper them is what they call it. So we're going to add the warm milk into the mixture while it's going and instead, if you put it all in at once and you keep going, you're just gonna make scrambled eggnog, which is not a bad idea for a dessert. I don't know. Maybe breakfast? Probably, I just don't know if you no. wanna do that, right? So I would just do it really slowly and it'll, nice, it'll incorporate real nice and become nice and smooth. Um, and that's what we're gonna do right now. And now we want the egg to get warm and cozy and snuggly with the milk, getting nice and frothy as well, which is great. Now we're just gonna let that incorporate for about maybe a minute. Now it's all fluffy and aerated and incorporated. No scrambled eggnog. No scrambled eggs. Yeah. And now you're gonna have to let this sit uh, in the fridge just to kind of cool down and calm down a little bit. But this is the perfect time. If you wanted to make the giftable version a spiked version, you can add your bourbon or your rum into this mixture right now and let it sit. And as it cools, it kind of incorporates with the milk and the egg mixture. 
Cheers, really great to have you here. It's been too long. I think we should bring more people to the party though. Yeah. And I think, I don't know about you, but this is making, this is like thirsty, it's really awesome, but I think we need something else, it's missing something. A little something sweet, maybe a yeah. cake? I love a cake idea. Do you know a guy that makes a cake? I know a guy that makes a really good cake. I know a chef. So I know oh. Chef Mooney. You know I know Jacob Brand. Jacob Brand, Chef Mooney. Back to you, you're making cake to go with our eggnogs. Happy holidays. Sounds like a dream team. I think so. Cheers. Thank you, Kelly and Garth. Uh, my name is Jacob Rand. I'm Barry Mooney. I am faculty for culinary management at NSCC. We're happy to be involved in the 25th anniversary, and I would like to welcome Jacob Rand back. He is an alumni from 2016. So we're building off the idea of something to give for this holiday season, and we are making a holiday spiced coffee cake. Coffee cake? I don't see any coffee here, Jacob. How are we gonna make coffee cake? This is rather a cake you have with coffee as opposed to a coffee flavored cake. Interesting, so uh, what do we need to do first? So first of all, we're gonna use some of the same flavors that was used in the eggnog. Same spices, cinnamon, clove, nutmeg, star anise. We're gonna use that and we're going to add a couple more ingredients and we're gonna make a nice flavorful uh, holiday cake. So we're gonna start off and this is called the creaming method. We're gonna take butter and sugar and we're gonna place it in our KitchenAid. Before we do this, we're gonna set the oven to 350 degrees and we're going to prepare a bunt pan. Now here I have a bunt pan, um, but you could also use loaf. a loaf pan or like a cake pan or even a individual loaf pan. So just to prepare this pan, I took some butter and I greased it just using paper towel or parchment paper. And then Barry is going to coat the inside with flour and dump out the excess. Now, if I was doing this in a loaf pan or in a cake pan, then I would definitely like to put a piece of parchment paper in the bottom, cut to the sides, just so that it's a little bit easier to get out of the pan. But in this case, because there's a more of a decorative shape to this bunk pan, we are going to actually not put any parchment in. Perfect, shake out all the excess, perfect. So here I have softened butter. If you don't have softened butter, just take your butter and microwave it for about 30 seconds on power level five in the microwave in about 10 second intervals until it's nice and soft. Or be organized and take it out the night before. Right, Jacob? Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what I would do. So the first step is we're going to take our sugar and our butter. We are going to take our orange zest. Now, I just used a microplane to take the zest off the orange. Um, if you don't have that, you could for sure use just like a cheese grater. I'm also gonna add my vanilla in at the same time. In my KitchenAid, I'm gonna use the paddle. Medium speed for probably about three to five minutes. Uh, just to incorporate the air, incorporate the butter um, and the sugar and the, all the flavor that we put in so far. So during this time, you could take the time to scale all of the rest of your ingredients out knowing that you have that time while that's whipping. In the meantime, I'm gonna take my dry ingredients. Here I have my flour, my salt, and my baking powder. And I'm gonna put it in a bowl here. And the same spices that Garth and Kelly used in the eggnog, I'm gonna use in um, this recipe as well. Just to echo those same flavors. So I'm going to use about two tablespoons. Very precise, Jeff. It's very precise. Yeah. It's just a good, good flavor. You could put more in it, you could put less in it. It really doesn't matter at this point. Everything else needs to be weighed precisely, but... Right, that's not gonna change the way the cake turns no, out. No, not than at all. The flavor would be stronger or a little, little weaker, subtle. So I already have my eggs cracked here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly incorporate my eggs into this butter and sugar mixture. So my butter was at room temperature and my eggs are also at room temperature. This is just to increase the air going into the product. And also, if your, your eggs are too cold, it's gonna harden that butter again. My dry ingredients that I had in this bowl, I'm just gonna give this a quick whisk, just so that they're all incorporated. Now, in the recipe, I am adding nuts as well as some dried fruit. So in this container, you can use whatever dried fruit you have or whatever you'd like to put in. And here, I have some dried apricots, some cherries, and some cranberries. And I soak them in hot water, just so that they um, don't absorb the moisture from the cake, and rather they're already juicy. 
And with nuts, I have a mixture of pecans and almonds. So what are we looking for before we add each egg in there? We're really just looking for that it's all combined nicely. Now at this stage, the batter could look a little broken. There could be little pieces of butter and it might look separated. That's okay at this point. We still just want to incorporate the egg slowly. When we add the dry ingredients back in, then they'll come back together as one smooth batter. All right, my last egg is incorporated. At this point, I'm going to take my sour cream and my milk, put it into one container, and I'm gonna give that a little bit of a mix. I could have done that for you, Chef. Oh, it's okay, Chef. <laughs> I'm going to slowly incorporate my dry ingredients and my wet ingredients into my base mixture. So in about a third at a time, I'm gonna add my, my dry ingredient, then my wet ingredients, and then alternate back and forth until we have a nice smooth batter. So you're just waiting for one round to be absorbed and yes, then moving on to the next one. I, my goal is to just get a nice smooth batter. My last wet ingredients, as well as the last of my dry ingredients. Give it one last mix. Now I'm gonna have my nuts ready, as well as my fruit. So it's nice and smooth. Give this one last mix. Now at this point, I want to fold in my other ingredients. So at this point, you could use as much dried fruit or as little as you want. And I'm only gonna use about half of the nuts that I prepped. Is there anything worried about when we're folding? We don't need to worry about losing air or anything like that? We're not worried about losing air at this point. What we don't wanna do is we don't wanna over mix it. Yeah. Cause that's gonna create more gluten and make it tougher. So I have my tin that's already prepped to go. So you could use a piping bag to put this in. I'm just gonna use a spoon. We don't wanna fill it right to the brim. Is there any method to when you're putting it in here? Anything you're thinking about? I want to have it as even as possible. I don't want one part that's filled more than the other parts. I also don't wanna overfill this because if you overfill this, the baking powder in this, as well as the air that we incorporated earlier, that's going to rise in the oven. So I'm gonna pop this in the oven. We're gonna check on it in about 15, 20 minutes. Should take about 25 to 30 minutes. So my timer went off for my cake. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check it. I have a neat trick here. I'm gonna use a skewer. I'm going to place it in the cake, take it out. As long as there's no batter, as long as it's nice and clean, it's good to go. As you can see, it has risen a little bit. and has some nice color on it. Came out clean, perfect. I'm gonna take my cake, set it here, and just let it cool down. So while our cake is cooling down, we are going to make two things. We're gonna make a eggnog chantilly, which sounds really fancy. Ooh. It's just whipped cream. <laughs> <laughs> and we're also making a flat icing to glaze our cake. The eggnog is a good idea because it, it helps kind of tie in the two, right? Exactly, yeah. yes. So in my bowl mixer, I'm gonna put in my whip attachment. And I'm going to use, place in my whipping cream. I want that to be as cold as possible, as well as my eggnog. So now I have my icing sugar. And I'm just gonna whisk this on medium to incorporate everything and to get it to medium peaks. So it's gonna thicken up, it's gonna look thicker and thicker, and then it's gonna look like it's making peaks. So it's getting there. I want to have this a little bit soft for the way that I'm doing it. But I could still put it over my oh head if I wanted to. Oh my goodness. Please don't try that at home. <laughs> <laughs> or do. All right, so now that I have my whipped cream ready to go, I'm gonna place it in the fridge while I make my glaze. So what do we need to do for the glaze? All right, so for the glaze, we're gonna make what is called a flat icing. This is just very simply icing sugar and milk. So I have about a cup of icing sugar here and I'm going to start off adding a little bit of milk. So I just wanna whisk it until it's nice and even. All right, so it's nice and thick, but once I put it on the cake, it's gonna nice and glaze it. Now that I have my flat icing, I'm gonna grab the coffee cake and I'm gonna glaze the cake. We can see the texture of that, right? It takes quite a bit of sugar to thicken that. So we have our flat icing and we have our cake. It's nice and cool. What I'm gonna do is just gonna very easily take my spoon. 
Now, if it's a straight out of the oven, we wouldn't do this because it would just run off. Exactly. Right? Nothing would stick. No, there's no precise moves for this. I just want it to cover the cake. All right, so quantity is purely up to you, right? Exactly. So this is something that you could make ahead of the time. I made it freeze very nicely. I even made some individual portions and tiny loaf pans that could be frozen and gifted to people as well. Well, these are very cute, this shape, Jacob, but maybe not everybody has that loaf pan at home, but I'm sure everybody has a muffin tin that they could use as well, right? Exactly. If you're looking to freeze this, just make sure that it's wrapped nice and tight with plastic wrap, place it in the freezer. It's going to last about two to three months in the freezer. And if you are looking to eat it right away, which I would personally, two to three days at the most. I'd say you'll start to go stale after three days. Same flavors in the eggnog and we would pair very nicely with the eggnog that Kelly and Garth made. Thanks again for joining us as part of the 25 minute learning series. Happy, Happy holidays. holidays.